In this video, you're looking at the effect of pH on the activity of urease in illustration. So most of the enzymes have characteristic pH at which their activity is maximum. So their activity is maximum. This is what you're looking at. The required materials are phosphate buffer, substrate, enzyme inhibitor, S-Lewis reagent, sodium tungstate, sulfuric acid, distilled water, beaker, test tube, glass rod, pipe, sandwich tube, test tube stand, boiling water bath, spectrophotometer, and centrifuge machine. So the reagents required are substrate, urea solution, enzyme source, inhibitor, tung sodium tungstate, coloring agent, s -Lewis reagent, buffer, phosphate buffer, enzyme horse gram. So, so in this clearly illustrate, the tabular column illustrate the procedure clearly, buffer and substrate are initially added and they are pre-incubated at 60 degrees centigrade for 15 minutes followed by the addition of enzyme and they are incubated at 60 degrees centigrade for 30 minutes followed by the addition of sodium tungstate, volume of sulfuric acid and enzyme. The mixture is centrifuged and the supernatant is collected. To the supernatant, this water and the nestless reagent is added and its optical density is measured at 540 nanometer. So, so while the the illustration clearly shows the, the procedure. Now, in the meantime, we can look at about the enzyme urease. So, urease belongs to the super family of amino hydrolases and possible triesterases. Ureases are found in numerous bacteria, fungi, algae, plants, and some invertebrates as well as soil as a soil enzyme. So they are of high molecular weight and they contain metal. It's a metal enzyme and the enzyme being predominantly nickel. This urea the enzyme catalyzes the hydrolysis of urea into carbon dioxide and ammonia. Usually this hydrolysis takes place in two stages. Ammonia, in the first stage, ammonia and carbamic acid are produced. The carbamic does produce spontaneously hydrolyzes to ammonia and carbonic acid. UDA's activity increases the pH of its environment as ammonia is produced, which is highly basic. Therefore, the pH becomes a lot more important. So, in this illustration also, we are looking at the optimum pH, and pH, since pH being a very important factor. So, meantime, the illustration, you, clearly portraits the step-by-step -step procedures needed to determine the optimum pH. So, when you look at the structure of the enzyme, the first being absorbed from the urease enzyme from jack bean, from that act Two centers and a nickel, nickel. So when you take it in withdrawal, 
the enzyme of urease can also be activated by manganese and cobalt when they are added in place of nickel, while salts of lead of found, were found to be inhibiting the enzyme. Usually the molecular weight of this particular urease enzyme is between 480 kilodalton to 550 kilodalton. So it's a high molecular weight which contain predominantly cysteine amino acid residues. So when you take in general, as well we are looking at the illustration of to find out the optimum pH of this enzyme, in general the optimum pH is formed to be 7.4 to most of the enzyme, or the optical temperature mostly is around 60 degrees centigrade. Substrate for includes urea or hydroxyurea or substrate in which this enzyme urease acts on. Bacterial urease, if you look at bacterial ureases, they are composed of three distinct subunits. One large, catalytic, two small. So one of the most famous uh, cases of urease enzyme is the enzyme produced from helicobacter species. They are composed of two subunits. These subunits are supramolecular and it plays a vital role for survival and neutralizing gastric acid by allowing urea to enter into periplasm via a protein gated urea channel. The presence of urea is is used in the diagnosis of helicobacter species. So, meanwhile, the illustration we can see sodium tungstate being added. It should be followed by sulfuric acid and enzyme. So, so when you look at the activity of the enzyme in general, the urease of the urease enzyme, the K cat by Km of urease in the processing of urea is found to be ten to the power of 14 times greater than the rate of the uncatalyzed elimination reaction of urea. For in nature, this, this particular thing is absurd. There are many reasons uh, to which this particular phenomenon is absurd. The proximity of urea to the active group in the site, active site, along with the correct orientation of the urea, allow hydrolysis to occur rapidly, urea alone is very stable due to the resonance form that it can adopt. The stabilization stability of urea, urea is understood to be due to its resonance energy. So when you say the active site of ureases. In the, in the alpha subunits, it, it contains this mu hydroxyl dimeric nickel center. So, water molecules located towards the opening of the active site form a tetrahedral cluster that fills the activity cavity side to hydrogen bonds. Some high amino acid residues are proposed to form mobile flap at the site which gate for the substrate. So cystic residues are common in this particular region. So helicobacter pylori as you see urease is very unique but the 
the other bacteriouriasis uh, is uh, somewhat similar to the Jack Bean uriasis. So, you no, know, there is a great, it has a significant action in pathogenesis. So, bacterial uriasis are often the mode of pathogenesis for many medical conditions. They are associated with hepatic encephalopathy, hepatic coma, infection, stones, and peptic ulceration. Also, you can see it has very significant application in agriculture. Urea is found in the environment. It is also artificially introduced, comprising more than half of all the synthetic nitrogen fertilizers used globally. Heavy use of urea is taught to promote eutrophication, despite observation that urea is rapidly transformed by microbial ureases and thus does not persist. Environmental urease activity is often measured as an indicator of the health of microbial communities. In the absence of plants, urease activity in soil is generally attributed to heterotropic microorganisms, although it has been demonstrated that some chemotrotropic monium oxidizing bacteria are capable of growth on urea as a sole source of carbon and nitrogen energy. So, so currently this still water is added to make up the volume. So, so this is based upon the principle that when the ammonia formed forms a brown complex with the Nestler's reagent, which is read out. At that particular nanometer. And you are seeing the Nestler's reagent is being added in the illustration. So, in this exercise, sulfuric acid is added. To stop the reaction, while well, the sodium tungstate is used to precipitate the protein, we can see the restless reagent is being added to a Meanwhile, we can study more about the urease enzyme. So, the urease enzyme has also has known enzymatic action. Even after their catalytic function is disabled, they have several functions like en entomotoxicity, inhibition of fungi, neurotoxicity in mammals, promotion of endocytes and inflammatory production in mammals, and induction of hemotaxis in bacteria. These activities may be part of a defense mechanism. So, a diagnostic test Many gastrointestinal or urinary tract pathogens produce urease, enabling the detection of urease to be used as diagnostic to detect the presence of pathogens. For example, Proteus vulgaris, which is urease positive pathogen, Ocardia, Cornibacterium urolyticum. 
the famous automobile helicopter back to pylori Rusella Cephalococcus Saphropithecus or all spurious positive pathogens. So now you can see that the test tubes, the, the different alicots or measure the broad precipitate. The intensity of color is different based on the concentration. So you can see they are being read out at 540 nanometer in the illustration. So let's take a look at the table which shows all the vessels and now the, the graph, the various range of pH against the optical density. So in this experiment, the optimal pH was found to be 